is a standard part of my fishing tackle. Never leave home without them. I can see the, the algae floating around in there. One of the things I was going to do on this camping trip was test out this new 2013. Oh, we got a screamer. Yes. He's in there. And he ain't happy about it. I think that's big fish of the night. Welcome back to another fishing adventure. Uh, this should be an interesting one today for sure. Let me explain what's going on while I get baited up. Today's hook bait is going to be sweet almond tiger nuts. I've never been to this lake. It's my first time setting eyes on it uh, today. It's going to be first time fishing it too. It's pretty significant distance away from home. Uh, not a place that I would, it's a little out of the range that I would go to for a day trip, it's about two and a half hours from home. And the plan is to camp here tonight, spend about 24 hours here fishing and camping. This pack bait uh, just made it here a few minutes ago before I came down here to this spot. It's oats and sweet feed, a can of corn, and a can of cream corn, and some vanilla. And uh, this is not where I'm gonna camp. I have a campsite reserved, uh, a lakeside campsite reserved for tonight. Uh, however, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon and the, the people who camped there last night are still there. I'm uh, gonna do a little uh, fishing here uh, until my campsite becomes available. Check-in time, check-out time is 4 p.m. So uh, I guess I got about three hours uh, until I can uh, access my campsite. I arrived here at noon uh, optimistically thinking that uh, the people that stayed, I knew the people would be there the night before, but uh, I was kind of optimistic. I was hoping that they would uh, either be gone or packing up, getting ready to be gone, but uh, it seems like they haven't even started packing up yet. They still have their tents set up and everything. And I'm just going to fish here for a few hours. I'm actually across the lake from where my campsite is. I can see my campsite way over there, and uh, I guess I could go up to the truck and grab my binoculars if I wanted to. I could keep an eye on my campsite over there and know when the people vacate, I guess. As far as I can see, there's two boats on this lake. One of them's right here by me. I hope, uh, hope they stay out as far as they are. Don't troll across where I'm about to fish here. So yeah, 99% rig. That uh, vanilla, oats, and corn. Almond tiger nuts, I think, is what I have. I can't even remember, that was five minutes ago. Yeah, like I said, it's a brand new lake, never been here. I know there's carp in here, but I really have no idea about what average size, uh, density. I, I just don't know. That's, I'm hoping to learn some stuff today. Okay, so based on how long that took to hit the bottom, that feels like about eight to ten feet deep right there only about 30 yards out I didn't cast very far because I don't know what this boat near me is gonna come we're gonna do if they're gonna come over here or not and the wind is blowing pretty good today 10 to 20 is what it feels like I'm kind of down hiding behind a, a cut bank back behind me here I don't think I'm gonna be so lucky over at my campsite I don't think there's a wind block over there I don't know that might kill the trip I don't know we'll see forecasted 30 miles an hour for tomorrow That was a lot more shallow right there, just off to the left a little ways. That was probably only four feet of water there. Interesting. Okay. I am in the state of South Dakota. So I'm only allowed two rods here instead of the usual three, like I, like I get in Iowa. Water clarity is pretty good. Uh, there is an algae bloom going on, but it's not too bad. And it seems like it might be just isolated just to the shoreline here. Yeah, as you can see, there's a little bit of algae in the water, but aside from that, the water is pretty clear. It's pretty sweet. Well, it's about 3 o'clock, and uh, my camp spot is vacant now. I'm just starting to get things. I just got my fishing stuff down there. I'm going to get baits in the water first, and then I'll get camp set up. Uh, it's 
kind of party central around here right now. Lots of uh, recreational boating going on, zooming around back and forth. There's one jet ski zooming around on the lake. There's a couple more boats over there, but whatever. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, a couple hours. They should, uh, they should be gone and looking forward to a nice quiet evening of uh, fishing here in this lake. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And no, I didn't have any bites over at that spot. I sat there for a couple hours and I did see a few fish surface, but uh, no bites. Got a little bit of rock scramble here to get down to the water. That'll be fun in the dark, I guess. That boat and jet ski noise is almost more annoying than the waves that they create. I'm gonna have to put my earplugs in, I think. I'm starting to get a headache already. I've only been here five minutes. Yeah, this is definitely something that is a standard part of my fishing tackle. Never leave home without them. Just got the, the tiger nuts that I was using at the spot from earlier. Just gonna leave those on there. No need to no need to freshen them up or anything. They're still good. So although it is party central out here uh, this afternoon, they seem to be maintaining a pretty good distance away from the shore. So I'm not gonna worry. I'm not gonna cast that far anyway, but uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about getting snagged here. Best I can tell, there are zero fishermen out in the out in the lake trolling or anything like that. It's it's early September. There's not gonna see much trolling for a while. I don't even know if there are walleyes in this lake, really. All right. Well, I studied the sonar maps before I came here and. Uh, it's not a steep, steep decline out to the to the maximum depth, but uh, the medium, I call it medium, um, about 30 yards out is where I put these baits, and it, my, my estimation based on how long it took to hit the bottom pretty much agrees with what I saw on the sonar maps. About six, seven feet of water is where I'm gonna try fishing. It gets, it gets to be about 17 to 20 out in the middle there. This is not a natural lake. It's a, it's a flooded valley. And uh, so it just uh, slopes down from both sides, and the deepest part is in the middle. I was watching my lines just in my peripheral. I didn't hear a thing. I don't know if I would, I had earplugs in, but I don't know if I would have heard it anyway with the wind blowing and that jet ski zooming around. I was actually sitting here thinking about heading home, not spending the night here just because of the wind. The wind's pretty unpleasant. It's just enough to be unpleasant and things, I gotta weight everything down, otherwise it'll blow away. And the lines are getting pulled quite a bit too, but hey, if I can, uh, be catching some fish pretty regularly, I think I'd be able to much more uh, willing to put up with this wind. I don't know what I've got here, but uh, I definitely got something. Just got to keep in mind that these waves are going to be a lot less here in a couple hours once these boats go away. This is encouraging. I just got to relax a little bit here, not try to horse. Wish there was a nice flat rock somewhere around here that I could stand on for landing, but I'm not seeing one. Oh, it's a big fish. It's a big carp. I just saw his back. I suppose that net cam is giving you a little glimpse of the water conditions right now since it's in the water. I can see the, the algae floating around in there. And the turbidity is increased because of the boat traffic and the wind. I've been sitting here about an hour. I ate finally ate lunch at like 3 30 it's about four o'clock i think all right i think i might have them good and tuckered out let's give it a try here come on come on okay in the net yes yeah 
pretty great first fish 14 yeah pretty great first fish this is encouraging uh 14 and some change in the net so we'll call it a 12 and a half 13 pound fish i don't know it's in the teens that's awesome i, I catch these I, i'll catch these all day long i love catching fish this size put up a great fight it took me a while to get this guy in especially with the wind and uh yeah well like i said i was thinking about bailing at dark because the wind is supposed to increase that's uh kind of what i'm thinking like eh, i don't know if i want to i don't know i'm just gonna play it by ear see how it goes obviously i'm gonna stay for a while yet back in the water there you go big fella are you caught there you go see ya yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you if you know me, if you've been watching these videos for some time, you know I'm not one to easily shy away from challenges when it comes to weather and stuff like that. And I'm going to fish here for a while, like I said, but I'm not just not so sure I want to do 24 hours of fighting with this wind. Four to six hours, no problemo, but I don't know. Let's see how it goes kind of sounds like I've already made up my mind that I'm not staying, but I'm trying to just rationalize and explain the reasons maybe, huh? Fish on again. It's been a while. probably another hour gone by nothing but wind and waves this boat's just been doing cookies right in front of me here for hours uh, there's two of them uh, one of them I think has got like some like wake boat attachment on it where, where the front of the nose of the boat sticks way high up in the air and they make some kind of the one boat makes a wake and then the other boat drives across it or something I don't know I hope they're having fun because it's really impeding my enjoyment. I hope my my enjoyment of the natural resources isn't, isn't impeding their enjoyment. Okay. Oh, jumped right out of the net. God, these waves suck. These waves are not caused by the wind. Yeah, it's a pretty good fish. It's smaller than the first one. I'd say this one's about 10 pounds or so. Great fight as usual. Great challenge trying to land this fish with these big wakes uh, crashing up on the wet rocks. My feet are all soaked. It's a good time, huh? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I am having a good time. It's just a little more challenging than it needs to be, I guess. But it is what it is. Fish two. I'm happy. Is this a specific ocean? Nope. It's a small lake in South Dakota. See ya. So I noticed that this line was uh, kind of being pulled in a different direction than where I had originally casted it. And so I lifted up on it and uh, now I'm seeing my, my bait was over there and now my line is way over there. It didn't pull drag or anything. This was a sneaky fish trying to swim away with a hook in his mouth. 
I don't know, there must not be, I guess this is a nice thing to learn here, there must not be much for trees in the water around here because, oh, he's right up against the bank down here. Oh, he's right up against the bank down there. That carp drug my bait all the way that far across from right to left, and that line didn't get caught on anything. It means the bottom's pretty, pretty clean, I think. The boat zoomers that were, uh, Zooming in front of me for two hours, have left finally. As you see, the waves uh, here along the shore are uh, pretty much non-existent. It's just the little, little waves caused by the wind here. Landing this fish is gonna be much more enjoyable. Come on in here, come on in. Yes, got him. He's about 15 in the net. Yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah, 15 and a half or so in the net, so you know, about a 14 pound fish or so. Great. Like I said, I love these teeners and catch them all day long. Fish number three, uh, got a couple hours left until the sun goes down. And let me get some light on that fish. Can you see him now? <laughs> oh, I got my sunglasses on, that's why it looks dark. Okay, well, this is going pretty good. I'm, I'm really happy with this being my first trip to this lake. Uh, and, and catching three, this 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 being the average size fish, you know, I haven't caught a fish less than 10 pounds yet. So, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. Back in the water. See ya. Got one. Okay. Wow, the fishing here today is uh, pretty good. Oh, yes. Broke the surface way out there. It's about 5.30. All the boats and stuff for one have vacated the lake. There's just there's one left. Pretty quiet. I probably cut it out of this video, but I, I had something on the line for a little while there. Uh, I, cast, I rebaited and I cast it out and before the bait even hit the bottom, something grabbed it and took off. And I couldn't do anything with it. It was just And I, I had it on and I fought it for probably about a minute. And then it, I felt some kind of a and it, it was gone. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I think the fact that it got, whatever ate it, ate it like before, as it was falling. And I'm wondering if it was like a, a musky or a pike or something. I don't know. I don't know about a carp hitting the bait as it's falling. <laughs> Maybe a catfish, I suppose. But this fish is getting a little jealous because I'm talking about another fish here. So I better start talking about this fish more. This is feeling like a pretty good fish. I haven't caught a glimpse of them yet. The sun is right there, and I just can't can't see anything in that glare. On in here. Just want to take a picture. I'm gonna let it go. Yes, he's in the net. That's another good fish. Yeah, the hits just keep on coming. This has a, this fish has a kind of a cool uh, scale pattern there towards his tail there. Just kind of all mixed up there, jumbled up scales. It's kind of interesting. I'm not gonna weigh this fish more than 10. I'd give it 11, 12 pounds. I don't know. What is this, fish for? Pretty great day of fishing here considering. Um, obviously it's not windy at the bottom of the lake, right? So even though you know I'm dealing with winds up here, not windy at the bottom of the lake. Fish don't seem to mind at all. Very cool. One of the things I was going to do on this camping trip was test out this new uh, power bank gadget that I got, uh, and I was going to do that in the morning. Uh, but since I'm not camping, I thought maybe you know while I'm waiting for the next bite, I'll go ahead and test it. This is a uh, big old 600 watt uh, power bank, and uh, Blue Eddy is the brand. And um, the thing that I want to do, I mean, of course you can do all the all the normal things uh, with battery stuff. It's got the USB ports and the, the 12 volt. Uh, thing you can charge all your gadgets, you know your phone and stuff, but 
Uh, the thing that I uh, am excited about to use are these uh, two outlets right here, these two household outlets. You can power household appliances up to 1200 watts. This is rated for 600 watts, but uh, if you turn it on to the, uh, the special mode, and I've got it turned on here, with, it's got a little picture of a strong arm doing that. Uh, you, can run, you can run things up to 1200 watts. And my intention is to make some coffee with it, with a coffee maker. I always have to have coffee when we camp, especially in the morning. And uh, it's just so nice in the morning uh, when you have electricity and you can just flip the switch on an automatic coffee maker and just sit there and wait for your coffee rather than to, to light a propane stove. And it just takes a lot longer to heat up the water and pouring over. It's so nice in the morning when you're camping to just flip on that switch and five minutes later you got your coffee. So I'm going to test that out here uh, right now because I, I could drink some coffee while I'm waiting for the next bite. This is one of those little mini coffee makers. It makes about 40 ounces of coffee. And I am a coffee snob, kind of. I don't drink fancy coffees, but I like high quality coffee. I grind my own at home, and uh, this is Caribou Coffee. That's my favorite brand. That's kind of a regional uh, brand. And from I think they're based in Minnesota. That's a lot of coffee. That's the way I like it. And as you can see, the device is at 100% right now. Plug it in, and go ahead and flip the switch on the coffee maker. Boom. What I'm really curious about is how much of this battery bank gets used up just to make one pot of coffee. I mean, I'm not going to leave the, after it's brewed, I'm not going to leave the pot on and l make this thing keep the coffee warm. Um, you know, after the coffee's brewed, I'll dump that into a thermos and keep it hot that way. But I'm curious how many, how many pots of coffee I can make with one full charge uh, of this battery bank. We have some coffee starting. It's getting fogged up. I hear some dripping. It's working. So while that coffee's brewing, I'll just show you a couple things about this. Obviously, I just showed you it's got these two household outlets here. USB, charge all your devices. 12 volt, so you can charge your 12 volt devices. It has the wireless um, phone charging uh, pad here. You can lay your phone on there and charge it that way. And then over here, it has, this is where you can charge it from your house or you can charge it uh, from your car or you can charge it for solar and it comes with the cables uh, for solar panels too if you, if you want to use solar and then on this side it's got uh, some expansion uh, ports here so you can chain it up to uh, additional battery banks if you want oh i'm getting fish yep definitely got a fish fish on yeah Oh, I got a drag peeler. I got a double. Double, double, double. Got a double and got coffee brewing. Well, I gotta pick one. This fish swam in. He's right here. He swam into the shore. What is it? It's small. It's just a little bitty guy. Okay, off you go. What's this one gonna be? This does not feel like a little bitty guy at all. Yeah, it's not a little bitty guy. Oh, slow down now. Come on now. You don't need to go clear back out there. Alright, fish. I got coffee brewing here. Coffee's got to be fresh. Remember, I'm a coffee snob. I got to have it when it's fresh. Get, get in here. There he is. Come on in. Just want to take a picture. Oh, that's a real good fish. Big fish of the day, easy. Every time I get him close to the net, he feels it and takes off again. Yes! Got him. 
Yeah, that's a beauty. Yeah, this is big fish of the day. Easy. This might go 20. 2013. Yeah, big fish of the day. Easy, easy. I moved the camera angle so you can get a little sun on this big boy. 21 something in the net, so 19 and a half, 20, I don't know. Big fish, big fish, big fight. I think I'm gonna name this fish Coffee. <laughs> I think I've uh, established there are some good sized fish in this lake for sure. I think they have, I mean, I haven't caught a fish, well, except for that dink, I guess. I caught that tiny one. But other than that, five big fish, nothing under 10 pounds. It's kind of carp fishing I like. He's big, he's hungry, he's going back in the water to fight another day. <sighs> Net release for the big boy. See ya, that was fun, thank you. So let's see how the coffee is doing. Oh, 79%. Still at 79% there. And the coffee is brewed as you can see. And yeah, I'm fancy camping. A little bit of cream. A little bit of cream in my coffee. That's about as fancy as I make it. No sugar or flavors. Bam. Ooh. I'm very pleased at how that worked. It only used up 20% of the battery bank, which is surprising. I thought it was going to use up a lot more than that. Definitely bringing this with me camping every time. I'll put the link in the description and uh, I might ask the company to see if they want to offer a discount code for you. If, it, if they do, it'll be down there. Oh yeah. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Hooked up. We like to do the drop back bites here at this lake. Yeah, go for it. Get all that energy burned off way out there. Sounds good. I love the flexibility in the second half of these rods. The first half has stiff backbone and then the second half is very flexible so when that fish moves especially when the fish moves toward me quickly that that flexible tip just keeps tension on the line uh, prevents and prevents slack and it's just I've, I've noticed a big difference uh, between these rods and uh, some of the other rods that I've used in the past I used to use those uh, uh, ugly stick big waters and those are just too much, in my opinion, they're too much. I might use those sometime if I ever head down to the Gulf of Mexico. These carp just don't quit. Catfish would have rolled over and gave up a long time ago. One of the things I really love about these carp. Get in here. This fish might be a little bigger than I think he is. I don't know, I, I just I can't really, every time he comes to the surface, I can't really see much because of that sun glare. I know it's a fish <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Okay, finally netted that beast. That was probably the biggest fighter of the day. About 14 and a half or so in the net. Well, not the biggest fish of the day, but definitely the longest and most challenging fight. This fish had heart for days. Just kept going and going. I fought him for a good 10 minutes, just, you know, 20 feet from the bank here. Uh, a little sunlight on him. Look at that shiny fish. What was it, like 13, 14, something like that? Good size uh, quality fish in this lake. I think I found a winner here. I can't wait to come back.
we go. I'll loosen that up a little bit. I think if there's a, a 20 pound fish in here, there's got to be a 25 pounder, huh? Is this a buffalo? Kind of look buffalo ish. I thought I saw some horns and a big furry hump. <laughs> no, but really, it did look like a kind of look like a big mouth buffalo for a second there. Oh, that was. Come on now. Took me a while to get him up here close, now he's back out there again. Fourteen four. Another high quality teen size uh, common carp from this new lake. I love it. I love it. The quality of the fish in this lake, at least in this spot, is great, great, great. What is this, five, six? I don't know. It's about 45 minutes daylight left. Let's see if a 25 pounder wants to make an appearance tonight, huh? I mean, just on the, what, a six fish that I caught here? The average size is probably right around 13, 14 pounds, something like that. Just other fish I've caught today. Sun is down and uh, it's getting dark fast. I don't enjoy fishing in the dark, mostly just because you can't see very good. I don't really feel like I don't think I'm gonna be stumbling around on these rocks. Even with lights, then the rocks make all sorts of crazy shadows that uh, makes it easy to fall. I think with the amount of fish that I have caught here this afternoon oh, once it got completely dark even if I was camping it once it got completely dark I probably would just reel in and just uh, get some sleep because yeah I'm, like I said I'm not really interested in stumbling around on these rocks in the dark yeah this is a big fish this might be bigger this is, might be big fish oh yes I think this is big fish of the day I had a 20 pounder earlier I think this is bigger. Cutting out a lot of this fight because it's been going on for a, a while. Maybe it'll be dark by the time I get this fish in the net if he keeps running back out there like he's doing right now. Okay, finally got him back here in front of me again. I'm just being real, real careful. This is a this is a good fish. I don't want to lose him. First. Head first in the net, please. Yes! He's in there. And he ain't happy about it. I think that's big fish of the night. I think I got a new PB in the net here, folks. I think I got a new PB. Twenty-seven? 27.15. Yeah, one ounce shy of 28 pounds in the net. And I'll be generous to take two pounds off from, for the net. So this is a new PB for me. Like I said, my previous PB was 24. And I'm gonna call this 26. It's a shame that I can't sit here and spend some time with this fish because my uh, other reel is screaming over there. <sighs> Back he goes, 26. <laughs> Big, big fish. That is a beaut. 
She's a beaut, Clark. Alright, get out of here. See you when you're 30. <sighs> well, it hasn't pulled any drag in a while. I would not be surprised if this is snagged up or something. Huh? It just feels like weight. And it's moving. I know a lot of you guys have uh, lots of big fish in the rivers and lakes where you live, but around here where I live, fish over 20 pounds will only come around once in a blue moon. And this must, might be twice in a blue moon today here. I don't know, this fish feels pretty good too. Yeah, I know. I didn't zero out the scale and try to get an exact weight on that fish. I, I just don't care that much about an exact weight. I'm not a tournament fisherman and it's more about the fun than anything and I don't know maybe I should just stop weighing fish altogether even I mean I wouldn't be surprised if this is another big one I mean they I know they the big boys and girls can kind of travel in packs I wouldn't be surprised this is another big fish oh you heard me. I've had this fish in front of me here for several minutes. It's time to net him because I can't really see very good. I don't have my headlight on. It's been getting dark while I'm fighting this fish. I can't see him hardly. Come here. Yes! 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 That's another big fish. That's another Right at, right at 20 in the net. Yeah, another big fish, 20 in the net, right at 20. Look at the tail on this fish. Miniature tail. I don't know if it was injured or something, but uh, you know, okay, so this is probably a 19 pound fish, but wow, what a tail. Probably would have fought a lot harder if he had a full size tail. I am so happy I came to this lake. And why haven't I come here sooner? Well, it's pretty far away, I guess, but it seems to be, it's gonna be worth it. I'm definitely gonna come back here and camp again, uh, well, camp uh, when uh, it's not quite so windy, different day. Wow. Most trips, when I go try new places, are not as successful as this. This is highly unusual, but it's highly satisfying as well. I'm gonna call it, I got a long drive home in the dark. Good thing I got some coffee. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. See you on the next one.